Let's head into the K Wave News Zoom Room where Sergeant Paul Tapao, AWOL Tapao, is uh, standing by on this Friday morning. Good morning, Sarge. Hey, off a day. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Sabrina. Hi. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you guys for having me on this uh, beautiful wet Friday. Off a day, everybody. Yeah, it is beautiful. Um, gray, it's nice. but it's needed, right? Like my grandma say, all the plants are happy. <laughs> Absolutely. But it does create uh, some uh, challenging driving conditions, right, Sarge? It does. It does. You know, this uh, that's that's really important when um, you know. I and I and I applaud the uh, efforts of the driving instructors who teach that about being aware of the road conditions. But you know, for me, growing up old school, there's nothing better than having that rain hit the sin. And it just makes you care too. So, you know, I look for it. I get a nostalgic feeling every time it rains. So I it's love just it. Me. Yeah. No, it's not just you. Um, what's going on with this uh, Project U? Oh, uh, you know, we're really excited for this. And, you know, we want to we wanna thank everybody for our, our same school partners, our, um, you know, the Department of Education. We want to thank um, our government agencies, such as Department of Youth Affairs. Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center, uh, Department of Public Works, um, for allowing the bus services to, you know, to assist with, with the kids in transportation. Um, you know, Department of Parks and Recs, you know, for abating the uh, the use of some of the facilities. So we're really excited for this, you know, partnering with our nonprofit organizations such as Minyadlo, Micronesian Resource Center, West Care Pacific Strive Coalition, Project U is going to kick off June 1st and it's a four week uh, mentorship program where we have, I, I believe now we have 12 to 15 uh, youth participants uh, ranging from 14 to 17 years of age that will be working closely with sworn police officers as their mentors. So the kids that are going to partake in this, it's, it's for, for us who's, who have been with the Guam Police Department for, you know, that put in the years Chief Ignacio had, had mentioned this. It's special because this is our first ever summer uh, summer camp, sort to say, or summer youth program that we have incorporated with Project U. And uh, we're really excited for this. The kids, you know, we're going to be with them Monday to Friday. Um, each day has a theme. Monday is our mentorship Monday, where we're gonna, they're going to see what it takes to be a police officer. They're going to work closely with a lot of our. Um, you know, our officers within the ranks, within the various divisions, such as our SWAT officers, our forensic science division, they're going to meet our recruits who are going to be sworn in in the next few weeks, and they're going to be out in OJT, and, uh, you know, um, we're going to be putting them out on the road, and they're going to get an opportunity to see what it takes to be a police officer. Um, you know, Tuesday is Trades Tuesday. We want to thank the uh, GCA Trades Academy, Dr. Johnson, um, it's going to create an opportunity for these kids who are going to be soon venturing into the real world where they can pick up and inherit a trade that can actually help them, you know, really teach them life skills. Wednesdays, wellness, when it is, uh, Wednesdays, Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center will be facilitating this uh, these days. Thursday, Strive Thursday. So, you know, I have personal connection to this, the Guam Police Department, uh, you know, within the, the, the start of the pandemic has partnered with West Care Pacific Strive Coalition. Um, they're going to be focusing on a lot of decision-making skills for these youth um, in, in really addressing issues with uh, prevention through education. And it's going to be facilitated by our youth ambassador. So the kids are in for a lot of things. And Fridays is one Friday. Manielo, Mike Canesian Resource Center, I was just listening to the uh, Vic, you know, um, Vic's podcast with uh, the One Mike Canesia Approach. Uh, we've been partnering with KUAM, Mike Canesian Resource Center. Manielo has been partnering with KUM and uh, you know look at where we hit, where we've come and you know we want to thank we want we want to thank Manyan most especially because it was really that collaboration with you know Manyello in providing this because they did provide uh, partial funding for Project U. Um, it's funded to uh, with the state school partners of Manyello under the FY 2020 Substance Abuse Prevention Treatment Block Grant from the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. So you know big thank you Suzu uh, Masi to Manyello and Mike Nijum Research Center. And lastly, really thanking the uh, Office of the Governor to allow uh, allow us, the Guam Police Department, to work with the various government agencies and our nonprofit organizations. So this is big. We're really excited for this. We've actually taken every initiative that we've done with the Guam Police Department 
basing it under Project U, making Project U our now youth initiative for the Guam Police Department. So we're really excited for this. Congratulations. You know, I was just going to say that it sounds like you took everything you got. You, I know you've been involved with over the past several years, consolidated, mm -hmm. consolidated them, and just really elevated all the things you guys are doing for um, our youth. So congratulations and, and good job. We uh, can't wait to see. Thank you. Thank um, you. And, you know, again, um, we, are, we, would like to, we would like to showcase the efforts of what we're doing. And, we, you know, we'll be sending out the media invites for you know, our media partners to come and see, you know, this is a great opportunity. And, you know, KOM has been there with us, you know, with Prime Time, following us with our Fade Away events, following us with our kickball tournaments. And this is, you know, an opportunity in which, you know, outside of where we are with the pandemic and moving forward, you know, this is an opportunity to really test what we can do and what we are going to be doing with the new norm. Of course, you know, COVID is always going to be that top priority but you know we still have to live our lives we still have to provide these um, uh, outreaches for the kids you know because this is where uh, the new norm of community oriented policing we're seeing it nationwide uh, reforms for policing and you know i want to applaud our administration and of course the leadership of stephen ignacio because you know understanding what we need to do as officers and you know we made headlines we've understood where we stand you know uh, with issues in, involving the police but people uh, the community seeing what we've done as, as a community effort with our neighborhood watch programs, our community outreach, and now working with our, our youth initiative. It's really an organizational transformation that we've uh, embarked in, in providing these services to the community. So, you know, again, thank you again for allowing us the platform to showcase what the Guam Police Department is bringing to the community. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're really excited for this. So, you know, again, all our sponsors, you know, our, our partners with our Safe School Program uh, initiative, you know, we want to thank them again for allowing um, the, uh, the Guam Police Department to partner with them with these with these initiatives. Right on, Sarge. Good to see you guys uh, back out. You know, because I, I know before the pandemic, you were doing a lot of great work, a lot of outreach work, uh, kickball mm -hmm. tournaments. Yep. And, and, and this is a great way to gauge it, you know, so, um, you know, we're really excited for, um, you know, speaking of the kickball tournament, part of the uh, fun Friday, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be exposing these kids to elite athletes. You know, we're partnering with um, the elite, two elite kickball team. And oh. Some of those, some of the team members from the Chuk uh, Hammer volleyball team are actually uh, national players within the own rights of the respective country representing the, uh, the, 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 the the island state of Chu in the Micronesian Games and of course the, the, the Pacific Games. They're going to be also having a uh, the rugby union, the Claris brothers, you know, um, big names with, with the rugby role, the rugby union here in Guam. Um, they're going to be a part of our, uh, you know, our rugby clinic and the Guam Football Association. So, you know, we want to thank Kino Sa San Gil and the team because, you know, we're bringing uh, GFA is going to avail um, the, the the high caliber training that is taught at our junior or our youth nationals onto our our, 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 uh, our 20 nationals and of course the Matau that of you know that are actually uh, abroad and they're preparing to um, you know to to compete for a spot in the World Cup. So these 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 15, 15 participants are going to be seeing the elite athletes in Fun Friday. So we're really excited for this and. This is going to give us a gauge in how we move forward with our our sporting events, such as the Fade Away from Violence Kickball Tournament, um, such as all the other events that we're, we've been doing. So um, we're really excited for this. I and I, I can't you know I, I can't wait for Tuesday. I can't wait for you know the week because you know the the team that um, Sergeant Nagy has assembled. You know everybody that's a part of this. They're they're you know Susie Santos. I, 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 you Susie. know, I, I, I can't, I can't stress enough on what Susie brings to the table. You know, she uh, facilitated a nice breaker on the orientation day, and I, I gotta admit, man, that was that was something to uh, to take in. But you know, she yeah. is part of the team, so we're excited for this. I think there's a video going around of her taking somebody down at a scene recently. There was a video. Um, that right. was the uh, the um, that was Sereno, a uh, incident. slingshot and, uh, you know, thing, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and you know that's just that's just the nature of the work. And you know, I, we we can armchair quarterback that, but the the mindset and the composure that she had to really fend off not fend off, but you know, 
uh, inform the responding officers that we're good, we're in control, and uh, you know we'll we'll let we'll let the community uh, decide and everything. But from my perspective, I think I thought she was spot on. I mean, I I called her up and I said, "Good job." You know, um, you had the mindset to realize that you had it under control. And I think if you compare that to what we see stateside, these are the mindset that our officers have, you know, and it's really, um, you know, she works with a lot of compassion and she understands that, hey, this part, of, this, is, this is the nature of our job. You know, we have to make sure that we're safe and the community is safe to allow the safety of the individuals that are, you know, alleged to have committed a crime. So, um, you know, I did, we did see that video, you know, and I, I, I did commend her. And I, you know, I told her, I said, if anything, you know, um, if you have somebody that if you need somebody to talk to, you know, we're here for her. Well, I didn't see the video. I'm sending it to you right now. Oh. <laughs> it was, yeah, you did. It was in the um, chat. Uh, Sarge, are there any checkpoints, any type of uh, traffic enforcement going on this weekend? We are, we are, we should be wrapping up our ticket or ticket campaign. Thanks, Brina, for coming out last week. <laughs> we got a lot of great, uh, a lot of great, uh, you know, vibes coming out from that, and of course, we had the static display uh, at the Agania Shopping Center. But um, you know, they did mention our officers from the Highway Patrol Division did mention that they are going to be doing because next week is the kickoff to the summer event. So uh, you know, be looking out for our DWI enforcement. We are going to be bringing in um, trainers from the uh, California Highway Patrol chips. They're going to be coming <laughs> in and they're going to be training our officers with a ride. So you know. That's the advanced roadside uh, impaired um, impaired driving enforcement. So this is the um, upscale level of enforcement outside of just uh, impaired driving through alcohol. Our, our officers who undergo this training will be able to detect those that um, are under the influence uh, with either an illicit drug or prescribed medication. So uh, this is good for the island, this is good for the community. And of course, this is always good for the Guam Police Department, when we can, uh, you know, uh, afford the officers, you know, the training that they need to stay ahead of the game, um, you know, when we're dealing with, with just the the, the, the changes that are happening, um, you know, around our community. Chips. So we'll be looking for volunteers. <laughs> this is the the wet lab. Yep, absolutely. When is this again? I will get more information. I know um, Sergeant Blankisco at the, when we did the outreach over mm -hmm. at the uh, ticket campaign, she, he did mention mm -hmm. that we are, you know, going to be bringing in our trainers. So, you know, we're really excited. These are guys that are coming in from the California Highway Patrol Division. And, you know, I'd like to make mention, you know, our officers too, we're trained in the drug recognition um, um, when, when, you know, when they came in, there were also officers from the California Highway Patrol. So. Um, this is good for the island because you know things evolve uh, with the drug scene here. So you know we want to we want to stay ahead of the game. How do you train though, like the, the for the drug? Uh... Well, you know the guys like scratching his face, then you know, oh it's meth. If they're like, hey officer, then the oh, eyes, the eyes never eyes. lie. Yeah, it's eyes. The eyes never lie. So you know, I mean, we, we it, it's it's the technique that is taught to the uh, the. The train, you know, from the trainer to the uh, the students, it really the eyes is really. I mean, that's that's pretty much concrete and stuff. So there are different techniques with you know the the light and everything and how it changes. So it, it's it's interesting. It really is interesting to see the physiological effect of what um, illicit drugs or anything that will impair your you know um, your body is going to do with right. the test that is going to be applied. So we're really excited for that. It is very interesting. It is. My mom took that training because growing up, she was always like, let me see your eyes, Christopher. Come over here. <laughs> get your cousins over here. Come here. Get, get. <laughs> she was the enforcer. <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> All yeah, right. I, I didn't have the lie detector, but I did have the eye detector. The eye detector. Every, yeah, yeah, my mom was a bartender. Uh, yeah, every parent knew that. <laughs> yeah, for real. And it's like, they look me in the eyes. I can't. I can't. I, I said Zaza said, so <laughs> can't use it as an excuse. Yeah, yeah. So tired, <laughs> Mom. How can you be tired doing nothing? Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, Sarge. You good? Absolutely, guys. Thank are we so going to ask about Jerry's Kitchen, or are we just going to let him go? No. Yeah. Can you provide anything with uh, Jerry's Kitchen? Oh, we you, we did send something out to the, to the media. Um, you know, we are moving with an, an administrative investigation, so... 
really just to protect the integrity um, of where we are with the investigation. You know, Chief has been transparent. Um, he's been on your show. He talked about it. He talked about, you know, we talked about how we are, you know, we understand the concerns of the community and instructing and moving forward with a follow-up reinvestigation of the incident um, to be able to open up more detailed information. This is really the, you know, the, 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 the trigger sort of say that that move the investigation forward with the Office of the Attorney General and, of course, our investigators from the Internal Affairs whip and then the creative portion. So, you know, um, he stated that we, you know, every, every every employee within the Guam Police Department, we are all held to a higher standard and we are all accountable for our actions. So um, once we get more information in regards to the um, our portion with the administrative, you know, the, the Office of the Attorney General will move forward with their site and we'll move forward with our, our administrative portion in regards to uh, the crash that happened on February 25th at the Camacho Landmark Center, which caused the damages to Jerry's kitchen. Any officers on, uh, I guess, administrative leave, leave during uh, this investigation? I don't know, ma'am. I, um, I I don't know the, whether they were placed on any, again, this um, developed, so, you know, this is, where we are now is understanding that there is an administrative investigation. So, uh, you know, Chief has, you know, once the once the administrative portion is concluded, he's going to come with the decision and on on uh, and his disposition of each officer that is going to be, uh, you know, that where the administrative investigation takes it. Mm -hmm. Is is this uh, or how common or uncommon is it to have this? What did you call it, a reinvestigation? It's been done before. Um, we've had, you know, um, we've, we've, it's, it's been done before. It, you know, it, it is the direction of the, you know, our agency head. Um, we too, as, as, as traffic investigators, we can actually, if we look at there's, there may be some discrepancies uh, in, the, uh, in the investigation. You, you may have a, a constituent who may see a flaw in, in the initial investigation and ask for a reinvestigation to be done so this is where you know we can actually open up the reinvest reinvestigation portion. I've done it before at the uh, as a traffic investigator. Uh, we were able to you know go through the process of again and doing interviews and of course you know being uh, an advanced crash investigator, we're able to see further than what uh, is available during the time of the investigation. So uh, it's been done before. Okay, you good. Um, anything on the officer involved shooting that occurred yesterday? Oh, yeah. What was up with that? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, again, uh, that that just happened yesterday. This is this is again, and we we're still in our preliminary state of the investigation. You know, um, there's we do want to. You know, I'm going to get clearance um, further to see if we're going to reach out. You know, we we want to ask if anybody had witnessed this. You know, we we saw some um, viral videos circulating on social media, but you know, if anybody. Um, we're actual witness to this incident. Um, you know, we're going to ask. We're going to be reaching out to the community and asking them for um, if they can if they can assist us with this case. You know, this is um, um, again two poles. Our activation of our criminal investigation division to check for the you know to investigate the criminal aspect and of course our our office of the uh, you know internal affairs side that's going to be taking care of the administrative side. But you know, we do know that there's videos that are out there circulating. And if you know that's going to be used as evidence, and we would like to really sit down and talk to any individuals or any of the motorists that were present that may have witnessed this, if you know they can help uh, with the Guam Police Department's portion of the investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, when you hear about the officer involved shooting, then you hear some of the details about, you know, people that are revving their engines and you know charging toward the the police. This is what the third third one we've heard about, and. It just seems, you know, what's going on, you know, uh, with the uh, people who are doing this. It seems they're so They're just so drugged violent. out. Yeah, yeah. They're super kicked out, and they have no fear. It's so violent. Yeah. It's it's the risk associated with the job. You know, and it, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, I mean, these are things in which um, we as officers, we, you know, um, it's, it's, it's part of the work. It really is. So... You mean the eleven dollars and eighty seven cents <laughs> starting pay? <laughs> That's for the rookies. <laughs> Risk. Sergeant Tabal's not making eleven. You know, 
And I, I, I will share with you when I when we came into the department, we hit, you know, during the time it was before the 08 Great Recession, we, man, I tell you, seven dollars for two years was something and it really showed the dedication of the officers that just came on. And you know, we came in, in a, on a uh, increment freeze and it wasn't the pay in itself, it was really, and this is where it, it's the passion for what we do. And, you know, we could have, I myself could have easily walked away into greener pastures, but understanding and, you know, $7 with a, a new child in a young family, it's like, wow, <laughs> is this really worth it? You know, like, you know, and then Tanana used to say, boy, it doesn't worth it. Again, it's worth it, you know, I mean, if you really, are passionate about what you're doing it i don't think you can put a price tag on the work that's done i mean um the work that we've been doing with the guam police department the hardworking men and women um you know it's it's there you know there's a core of understanding i mean you know, until you walk in the boots i mean you you've seen what you <laughs> you went to our, our our cycle you see what it takes to really weed out the strong and those who have the desire yeah. to be police officers you met Sergeant Carl Cruz, you know, I mean, that's just one one fraction of what it takes to be a police officer, but understanding the work in itself, the people that we swore to protect, the oath that we took, you know, Guam is still good. Guam is still, it's still, there's still a place in my heart that still feels with, that runs, you know, the roots, the holly runs deep, you know, so it's, but you're, talk, you're, you're talking about that WhatsApp video that goes out yesterday, right? <laughs> The red. Which one? The what's that video that was out yesterday? This officer involved shooting. It was the red vehicle, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know why I charged mm -hmm. the officers? I don't know. Because yeah, it was a charger. <laughs> challenger. Oh, it's Challenger. Oh, my bad. <laughs> what What is it with these red vehicles, bro? Red Jeep, <laughs> red Challenger. <laughs> I'll bag it. <laughs> yeah, easy. Uh, easy yeah. for you. <laughs> okay. Sarge, thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, man. Stay safe. Be safe, Sarge. Have a good Absolutely, weekend. Absolutely, guys. Thank you. June 1st. What are you cooking for this weather? Yeah. I'm curious. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to make a slamming soba. Issue bang one, two, three. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Elevated issue six bang. Minute, six minute egg does magic to the issue bang. If you know how to do a six minute egg, add some bacho in there and put the issue bang and leftover roast beef. Man, Ooh. I tell you, you can even take the roast beef and the. The daddy sandwiches, throw it in. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it's each bank. Dollar forty nine for each bank. Wow, there you go. That's uh, Sergeant Paul Tapao's special today. You can see it on Facebook. <laughs> That's what the officers <laughs> making eleven bucks to have to eat. <laughs> it's your bag. It's your bag, bro. Right on. You know Shin the struggle real when yeah. you have each your bag in your pantry. <laughs> Thank Take you. Care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, Sarge. See you. Uh, Sarge, Sergeant Paul Tapao.